Gaius Valerius Catullus, also known as Catullus. Who was this guy? Um, Gaius Catullus was born in the first century BC. He was a poet of the late Roman Republic, and he was from a little city in the north of Italy called Verona, um, which happens to be the name of the city where I work, uh, and that's just a coincidence. Um, but not to go too off track, um, Gaius Catullus was a fantastic poet with a very unusual life, uh, a very, you might even say, unfortunate life, um, but he had a lot of very beautiful poetry. Um, now, to go over some facts about Catullus, uh, we really don't know that much about him. Um, we believe he died fairly young, at about 30 years of age, and we believe he had a very conflicting relationship with a young married woman named Lesbia, um, although that might have just been a muse or a theme, a poetic theme. But in any case, um, Catullus is a phenomenal poet, especially if you are interested in learning Latin. The Latin language, one of the uh, most influential languages of all time. Um, Catullus was extremely influential um, and would later impact incredible poets like Ovid and Virgil. And um, his uh, poems have really extended into our age, influencing even our art. Um, now he's very experimental, and he's got some very interesting poetry. Uh, so I'd like to, to take today to read some of his poems to you. Um, now, I'm a little out of practice, but I'm going to be reading them in Latin. I'm going to re be reading them in lingua latina. And um, then I'm going to be reading the translation in English to you. And I hope that um, I'll do a fair job. Uh, trying to enumerate this beautiful language, and I hope that you can kind of grasp uh, some of the roots of our words today. Maybe you'll hear a word or two that will remind you of a word you know in English, and you'll go, huh, that's interesting. I wonder where that word came from. That's what's called a root word. Um, but without much further ado, I'd like to go into our, our first poem today. Welcome back. So this poem is called simply Catullus V. Uh, Catullus had a habit of not naming his poems, um, so they were named basically in the order in which they were discovered. Uh, but this poem is also called Let Us Live My Lesbia and Let Us Love, which is simply the first line of the poem. And this is a very passionate poem. Uh, it's about the power of love, about the power of love in particular, between Catullus and Lesbia. And he describes basically how uh, they shouldn't care for any of the worries in the world, any of the uh, rumors imposed upon them by others, uh, because they have each other. Um, now, to begin, uh, let me give my best. We wamus mea lesbia, atque amemus. Romulesque senum seviorum omnes unius aestimimus assis. Soles occidere et redire possant. Nobis cum semelo, nobis cum semelo cidit brevis lux. Nox est perpetua una dormienda. Dami basia mile, de indecentum, de in mile altera. De in secunda centum, de in de usque altera mille, de in de centum, de in com milia multe fecerimas conturbabias, conturbabimas ila, ne sciamis aut ne quis malis invidere posit, com tantum sciat esse basiorum. Here's the translation. Let us live, my lesbia, and let us love. And let us value of the rumors of more severe old men at only a penny. In other words, don't value the words spoken by others. 
or value them at only a penny. Suns are able to set and return, when once the short light has set for us, one perpetual night must be slept by us. Give me a thousand kisses, and then a hundred, then another thousand, then a second hundred, then immediately a thousand, then a hundred, then, when we have melt, when we will have made many thousand kisses, we will throw them into confusion, lest we know, or lest any one bad be able to envy when he knows there to be so many kisses. So I'd like to take, I'd like you to maybe pause the video now and and take the time and maybe elaborate what you've just read. And maybe if we take a look at the original Latin right here, you might be able to derive some words. Uh, um, this one is simply called Catullus eighty five. Now, this is a very short poem, but it's probably Catullus's most famous poem, and it describes the power of love, in this sense, particularly the negative impact of love. I'm going to read it for you now, and I'd like you to observe the poem and observe some of the words, especially if you're familiar with some of the Romance languages, such as Spanish, Italian, or French you might have a good understanding of some of these words already. Here we go. Odi et amo, quare et faciam, fortasse requiris, nescio, sed fieri sentio et excrocior. You might recognize some of these words, such as odi, from, the, from an English word like odious or amo, from a word such as amore, or love. Now let's take a look at the original, or sorry, the translated English version. Oops. I hate and I love, wherefore I do this, perhaps you ask. I do not know, but I feel it being done, and I am tormented. Now, this is a particularly powerful love. I might even think this to be a teenage love, such as a teenage crush, and he's writing this powerful emotional poetry for his crush, in this case, Lesbia. I hope you've enjoyed that one. I do particularly. I'm going to take it back to the Latin now, and you're welcome to pause it and maybe elaborate on some of the words you see. Fortasse, from forte or strong, requires, requires. So take a moment, if you want, if you like, and enjoy reading this beautiful, ancient work of poetry. Hi again. Uh, this poem is called simply Catullus One, and this is actually the dedication uh, on his uh, uh, book of poetry. Um, now this was actually a dedication to a man named Cornelius Nepos who was a Roman biographer and a poet also living near Catullus. Um, now, like Catullus, not much is known about this figure. Um, here's a little portrait of him. Uh, but um, he was a friend of Catullus, and we obviously see he was um, to whom Catullus dedicated his little book of poetry, his little no one libello. So here we go. Cui dono lepidum no one libellum? Arida modo pumis expolitum? Corneli tibi namque tu solebas meas esse aliquid putare nugas. Yam tum cum ausis es unas italorum. Omne Iwam Tribas Explicare Cartes Doctus Jupiter et Laboriosus Quare Habe Tibe Habe Tibi Quid quid hoc libelli quale cumque quod o patrona virgo plus uno maneat perenne saeclo. And now for the English translation. 
To whom do I dedicate this new, charming little book, just now polished with a dry pumice stone? To you, Cornelius, for you were accustomed to think that my nonsense was something, even then when you alone of the Italians dared to unfold the entire age in three papyrus rolls. Learned by Jupiter, and full of labor, therefore have for yourself whatever this is of a little book, of whatever sort, which, O patron maiden, may it remain everlasting, more than one lifetime. Now that's a really beautiful poem, and we, if we think about it, it's really come true, Catullus's little prediction, may it remain everlasting more than one li lifetime, because unbeknownst to him, it's for more than 2,000 years, and yet we're still reading this. Now, I hope you have enjoyed this little experiment of, of mine. My Latin is okay. As a matter of fact, I actually minored in Latin when I went to college, which basically means I spent a lot of time learning Latin and trying to pronounce Latin and trying to conjugate verbs and trying to understand what I was reading. And it was a really fun uh learning process for me because it helped me to understand my own language, the English language, better. And it's really a beautiful language, so I hope you've enjoyed reading along with me and listening to this language. And I hope that maybe when you go on to college, you consider studying this a little bit, uh, at, for at the very least being able to study and read a lot of this amazing poetry in its original tongue. Um, but thanks for joining me for this digital story time today. I love Catullus. I'm, I'm crazy about the guy. So you're welcome to email me at any time with any questions you have regarding Catullus or similar Latin poetry. There's a lot of really phenomenal Latin poets who um, have really influenced our own histories and our own stories. Uh, to name a few, I definitely recommend checking out Ovid. Uh, he wrote the Metamorphoses, and I definitely ch recommend checking out Virgil, who wrote the Aeneid. And um, there's a ton of other great, great poets. Uh, so thanks for reading along with me today, and I hope you're doing well and staying well, and uh, I'll see you soon. Thanks.